and get into it. So, all right, guys, welcome to episode number nine here. This is Iori Breakdown. Today, we are going to learn a little bit about how to jungle. We do have a very special guest from Trademark Esports. We do have Z Freak will be joining us uh, in this breakdown. I'm so excited to finally have a pro player on the stream, something we've been talking about for a while. It only took nine episodes to make it happen, but uh, it's, it's very exciting indeed. So today, Jungling 101, we're going to look at three distinct replays and uh, take a look at some very specifics about what you need to do to improve your jungling experience, because there's nothing more frustrating than being in a team matchmaking game or a single matchmaking game. Seeing that Legionnaire has been in the jungle for half an hour, sitting at 150 GPM, can't figure out which items to buy, can't figure out when to gank, where to gank, or really where to do anything whatsoever. So, uh, hopefully, some of you aspiring jungles out, junglers out there, will learn a thing or two here from uh, inside the mind of Z Freak. So, we're going to start out today with a pretty simplistic format. We're going to bring Z Freak on. We're going to talk about uh, just sort of the meta of jungling a little bit, some generic questions that maybe apply to most jungling heroes uh, and that kind of stuff. And then we're going to again look at three distinct replays. We're going to take a look at Legionnaire, Parasite, and Tempest. Those are the three junglers that we are going to investigate a little bit further. And we do have three very nice replays uh, lined up here. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. I believe we do have Z-Freak on the line. Z-Freak, how are you feeling, my friend? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> pretty good? Glad to hear pretty it. Pretty good. Pretty good? That's good. So, I, I mean, I guess we'll get right into it. Let's talk about jungling. Now, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, something that was told to me a while ago that I've been carrying that nugget of information forward. Um, I want to start by talking about cost efficiency in the jungle because one of the things that um, you know some people have told me before is that a team that has a jungler versus a team with no jungler um, will be a little bit more efficient because there's untapped experience and gold sitting in the jungle and having two solo lanes versus just one solo lane is a little bit more cost efficient. I mean is there truth to that or is that totally situational and subjective? Um, no, there is a lot of truth to that. It's essentially why the tri lane metagame got, uh, got put out of date. Because teams would just run, like, uh, you know, a dual lane against the tri lane, or a dual lane against their solo, and then, while they win one lane, the idea is that the jungler is not only farming in, like, a fourth lane, but can also help win the other two. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of, uh, yeah, it does. It just adds farm for the team. So, given that being the case, how come we don't see a jungler on every single team? Is it just a matter of personal preference or specific play style? Or, uh, I mean, if it's that efficient, why doesn't every team just bring on a jungler? Um, a lot of times, junglers get banned. Sometimes you're better off running 2-2-1. Sometimes you want to try and have just a purely roaming support. And uh, you can't really afford to use that hero pick in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And you need them to help you lane. I see. Makes makes a bit of sense as well. One of the other things I want to ask you about is it seems in the lower tier um, bracket, you know, the 14, 15, even 1600 brackets, a lot of people operate under the assumption that jungling's a lot easier because you don't have to worry about the variance of being in lane and as far as your hero comp or your team composition up there in that lane versus uh, your opponents in that lane. You just have to focus on the jungle. It's just you and the creeps. Um, but I feel like there's a little more to it than that. You know, Legionnaire can't just run in there and not know how to stack creeps, not know when to stack creeps. Um, so is that true? I mean, it, would you say uh, laning is easier than jungling or vice versa? Um, to be honest, if you uh, jungle correctly, it's probably a little harder than just being like the guy who's solo top if you're on Hellborn, just trying not to die. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, well, yeah, it's a little harder being in the jungle if you do it correctly. But like, as you said, in like 1400 to 1600 games, most of the times they are just farming the jungle out mm -hmm. and it's relatively simple. And at the higher level play, you think laning or jungling is definitely more difficult? I mean, is that just some of your bias since you seem to be the, the all-star jungle <laughs> player for TDM? Or uh, do you think there's some fact um, to back that up? Sometimes it's definitely harder to lane. But a lot of times when you have like a, a dual lane versus dual lane set up and it's playing kind of passively, it's just about staying in position. Versus when you're a jungler in high level play, you're always trying to figure out where you can gank and how to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately uh, farming efficiently. Right, definitely. Uh, one of the other aspects of jungling that is frustrating uh, for a player, like you know, I'm upper 16s, and I can jungle okay on some heroes, um, but. If the other team is somewhat with it and they ca and they ward some of the spawns, so obviously blocking some of those creep spawns, what's the best way to deal with that? Obviously, if you place counter wards, that can also block your spawns as well, since the counter wards count as um, you know 
whatever the, the terminology is, that's something in the way so the creeps can't spawn. What's the best way to deal with that? I mean, is, is there usually the be is usually the best strategy just to move into your opponent's jungle or to just sort of take the spawns that aren't blocked? Or, I mean, what's the kind of rule of thumb as far as warding the creep spawns? Um, you mean about what to do when they do ward the creep yes. spawns? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, essentially, it's a pretty much on-the-fly thing. For instance, if you're on Hellborn and they use their rune ward to block your medium camp spawn right by the top rune, you know there's only one place their ward can be, and you just counter, uh, you just counter ward it a minute into the game. Mm-hmm. But if they only block, say, the pool camp on either side, you just remain in your jungle and deal with farming without one of your spawns. I see. And, I mean, on top of that, I guess, or sort of a continuation of that, how do you make that distinction of whether you're going to jungle in your own jungle or your opponent's jungle? Because that's something that um, seems to be hit or miss from my casting experience. Sometimes we see, like, you on a Parasite just go super aggressive and set up early ganks, and other times we'll, uh, you know, just see you take Parasite in the defensive jungle and uh, just sort of farm your way to level 6. How do you make that distinction? Is it just based on hero selections, or is there something else to it? Well, a lot of times it's a uh, it's a call that the whole team makes about like how our lanes are going to be set up comparatively to their lanes, where the easier ganks are going to be, or if I'm going to get just roamed constantly in my own jungle, maybe I'll go to their jungle to avoid it. Mm -hmm. I see. So it it really is just situational based on warding and and lineups and your opponent's lineups. It really isn't. Uh... A preference-based thing, just uh, taking on a game-by-game -game basis. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about as far as stacking, have you guys ever played around with taking one of your roaming supports and helping in, in the jungle? Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, one of the games that I casted, we saw an Ophelia and Glacius in the jungle together. And Glacius just simply helped Ophelia kill creeps, helped Ophelia stack creeps. Have you guys ever played around with strategies like that? Um, I don't believe it was the winning strategy in that game, but it was sort of an interesting take on something we don't really see that often. Um, at least not in the early stage. I mean, this I'm talking level 1, 2, it was Glacius and Ophelia in the jungle together. Um, that's not really something we've experimented with, although it is something I've seen done before. Uh, it's kind of inefficient versus, uh, like, if the Glaces is there the whole time helping the Ophelia hit creeps, then it's incredibly inefficient. Mm -hmm. But if it's the Glacey is just stacking a camp that's, like, right next to lane and still remaining in the lane with his teammate to win it, mm -hmm. then it's not as bad, and it's something that all supports should really try to do for their jungler. I see. Yeah, I mean, the, I probably should have brought up this replay and we could have talked about it a little bit because it was sort of interesting. Maybe we'll uh, do that should we have enough time. Uh, but one of the things about it that I thought was particularly interesting was, the, you, like you said, it's sort of inefficient is exactly what they did. Glacius was, they were tethered at the heel, um, just, you know, auto-attacking the creeps away, which was sort of strange. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe worth experimenting with. It was sort of interesting. I wasn't really sure what to make of it. it was, as a caster, I was sort of left uh, a little bit dumbfounded. There was actually uh, one game, I think it had to be like five months ago at this point, like uh, right when the tank healer metagame was kicking in, we uh, ended up playing against, uh, I think they were still called DWI at the time, and they ended up running an Accursed and a Legionnaire in their jungle, and they essentially quad laned bottom and abandoned top. And it actually worked out for them because the only hero we could really send up there that would use the farm efficiently was a hag. Mm -hmm. And then they just, uh, they had a free farming pebbles bottom, and then a cursed and legionnaire just, just farmed the jungle. And mm -hmm. at around the 10 minute mark, they all just showed up with vanguards and <laughs> kind of pushed. That's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I would actually be curious to see that game if it's casted somewhere. That sounds like... Uh... I think it was a scrim, and I don't believe it was casted anywhere. Rats. That, sound, that sounds pretty crazy. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about as far as experimenting in the jungle, breaking free from that norm. Uh, one of the last uh, just sort of general topics I want to cover before we jump straight into the replays is with stacking, you know, we just talked about having a support, just coming in, stacking a creep camp while they're on their way, maybe roaming to another lane or planting some boards is certainly cost efficient. But from the uh, jungler's perspective, is stacking always a good thing? Because I've, I've read some forum posts, you know, how there's so many uh, geniuses and know-it-alls on Reddit and uh, the competitive forums. <laughs> Um, and I've, I've seen at least some people mention that you should never even really attempt the jungle unless you have um, 
camps stacked, except for maybe the very early levels, you know, level 1, level 2. But other than that, it's more efficient to always stack spawns instead of just killing them one at a time, regardless of what stage of the game you're in. Is there truth to that, or is it sort of on a hero here? Because obviously Legionnaire is a hero where stacking creeps is really important. But a hero like Tempest, um, you know, it's not too often we see people stacking creep camps, you know, beyond that, just the occasional Glacius walking by and happens to uh, do it efficiently. Mm -hmm. Well, um, that's really uh, an interesting question because a lot of times when I'm farming on a hero like Tempest or Parasite or something that doesn't truly thrive on stacks like a Legionnaire would, mm -hmm. um, you always try and kill the creeps so that they're not in the spawn. Or how to really explain this? It would be easier if I showed you, but you essentially pull the creeps out when you kill them to the point that their corpses won't register in the spawn area. Right. So essentially they just spawn again anyway, and it's almost as if you stacked, but it's much easier to farm. Ah, uh, I see. Because, yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, if you kill the creeps in their little camp, the corpses count as... The, the same effect as a ward it will block the next rotation of spawns if the creeps, or if the corpses, rather, haven't dissipated or decomposed or whatever they do in uh, the world of New Earth. Um, so that's actually a really good point, and that's not something that uh, the geniuses on the forums had indicated, but uh, it's actually pretty interesting. So, um, all right, very cool, very cool indeed. So unless you have any um, an additional points here as far as general jungling tips, I think we can go ahead and move into our first replay. Oh, and uh, no, I really don't have any, but Sender just told me that that game with uh, DWI doing the double jungler strategy was in the Lions Quality Cup. I'm thinking it was like six months ago. Lions do you, I'll, I'll do some. Do you ever want to try and find that? Yes. Let's see here. Lions Quality Cup. Just gonna mark that down so I don't forget it later because I know I will. So, all right, very cool. Do you have our first replay ready to go? Are you loaded up? Uh, you... Yeah, I believe so. Alrighty. So let's actually go ahead and switch it on over here. And there we go. So the first game we're going to look at, guys, is indeed the Legionnaire game. So we have three replays, as I mentioned. All these replays, we're pretty much just going to look at the first 10, 15 minutes or so. We're going to focus very heavily on the jungling aspect. All of these games, I think TDM actually wins all of these games, at least two of the three. I'm not sure about the third one. Um, but we're not too concerned about that. We're not even too concerned about the late game build. This is strictly that time of the game when we're at that one one person jungling aspect. You know, it's just Z Freak and the creeps. No one else to really worry about. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if you're ready, sir, we'll go ahead and count it down and press play. Uh, are you at the 7:40 mark? Yep. yep. On the um, replay control, not the in-game timer. Uh, yeah. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and get started here in three, two, one, go on times one speed. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock the camera here. Uh, on, well, we'll just follow Legionnaire for now. We're going to go ahead and lock our camera here right onto you. And I'm going to pull up my notes. So um, one of the first things I wanted to ask you about a little bit, and you mentioned earlier, you might not, this isn't your strong suit as you're not the team's drafter, but generally speaking, what sort of lineups do you guys like to pick up Legionnaire? I mean, is there a particular hero you like to pick him up to counter on the opposing team or a particular hero you like to synergize with on your own team uh, to make Legionnaire a little more effective? Um, norm I think we normally just pick him when uh, most of the other junglers are gone. Like in this game, I believe the other team banned Tempest, Ophelia, and Parasite. Mm -hmm. And uh, Legionnaire actually works really, really well with DS, so it was a good pickup here. I see. Well, that definitely makes sense. Um, so obviously the starting items from Legionnaire are pretty straightforward. I think pretty much everybody uh, knows the double iron buckler and uh, either a potion or a set of uh, runes um, kind of is the norm on Legionnaire. I mean, do you ever differ from this sort of standard starting item choice? Um, actually, if anybody has watched me uh, stream, a lot of the times when I'm in Hellborn jungle, I'll actually buy a hatchet and clear the creeps or clear the trees near the easy camp so I can double stack the uh, easy camp and the medium camp by the top rune. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, no, not really. This is standard. Yeah, definitely one of the heroes that um, sort of across the boards, even in the lower tier, people seem to be pretty <laughs> well aware that this is the way to go with Legionnaire, so not a big surprise. Um, and actually, the first time I watched this replay when I was just taking down notes, there was a bug in whatever it was, and it showed you with no starting item. So I spent a really long time pondering 
why would he start without any items? This is the strangest <laughs> replay I've ever seen, and then I realized that it was a bug as I saw the minus 20s popping up. So had an attack of paranoia, but uh, it was it was just fine. So what's the first thing that comes to your mind, though, when you're going to jungle with Legionnaire? Uh, obviously, it looks like you're preparing to stack the, the green camp here in your own jungle. Um, but, you know, I guess kind of give us a little bit of a breakdown here of the general strategy with the Legionnaire in the jungle. Um... Well, general strategy is in like first few minutes. Yeah, when... uh, you know, right as you enter the jungle. I mean, what are you try trying to do? Do you ever try to set up a bloodlust kill? Is it just about always going to the oh, green no. camp to stack it? Um, you almost you essentially you just go to the easy camp slash green camp and stack it. Very good. That's, that's really the uh, the best thing you can do because it's easy to farm as legionnaire and it gives you level two, so you can. Uh, level the charge, which makes it easier to farm harder creeps like it is now. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the real question, and I think one of the harder <coughs> things for people to really grasp is, I mean, how do you decide when to stack and when not to stack? I mean, for this second camp here, obviously you you didn't stack it. So what's the logic behind that? Is it always better to do this, or does it pretend, or does it base on the creep spawns? Um, you know, I mean, why didn't you stack the minotaurs there? I guess is the question. It looks like you're going to kind of do a half stack here. Um, so I guess we'll just share some insight for someone. Let's let's say I've never played Legionnaire in the jungle, and I'm going to do it for the first time. Um, you know, how do you decide when to stack and when not to stack? Well, in that situation, it was either dawdle around for 30 seconds and wait to stack, or damage the creep some. Mm -hmm. And when you have charge as Legionnaire, you essentially take no damage when the debuff is on the creeps, because they're hitting for 50%. Mm -hmm. So it's really worth it to get in that damage and rather than just sitting around and waiting to stack both of them. I see, and that's actually a really key thing to point out that I think a lot of us don't really um, take note of is that charge is particularly helpful in farming because it reduces that attack damage from those big creeps. So in the camps where you have like a cat man early on or one of the big minotaurs, um, it's a pretty damn powerful tool to be able to take these creeps down in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. So... Um, I guess my next sort of, um, the next thing my brain jumps to here in jungling is how do you balance the level of, or the frequency that you gank? Obviously some farming or jungling heroes are a little more aggressive than others. Parasite being one where you're know, ganking level 2, level 3 is a little bit more appropriate. Where do you stand with that for Legionnaire? I mean, at what point do you start trying to gank? Is it just based simply on lane control as we see here? Uh, the pull is uh, blocked, so uh, you know there isn't really a whole lot of lane control for you guys here uh, in the top lane. Um, mm -hmm. How do you base your, your ganking opportunities? Is it just based on where the other team is, or do you have some sort of a new uh, metric that you use to determine that? Um, well, the way I play Legionnaire, I almost never skill taunt before level 4, so mm -hmm. there will be no ganking until level 4, <laughs> and in this situation, there's also a Plague Rider for them in the long lane, which means there's no lane control whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And it's actually pretty difficult for a Legionnaire to gank that close to the tower. Yeah. Definitely. So, so yeah. That, it, that's really what it comes down to, is just having that lane control. Mm -hmm. I see. And do you ever attempt ganks at, at mid, you know, roaming down and trying to set something up to support the mid lane, or is that sort of a easier said than done type of a thing? That's more of an easier said than done thing, because in most cases, a team is going to have a lane or some kind of vision for them in middle, mm -hmm. and it takes an awful long time for Legionnaire to show up without them being able to just set up a stun to stop him. Right. So, I mean, is, it, is that ever worthwhile? Again, I guess it's one of those, if they're called out of position or you can roam down there real quick and pick something up, it's worth it. But if not, then um, just continue farming away. Uh, I want to go into the GPM type here. You're just about the 235 GPM mark. Is that pretty normal? Uh, I mean, can you give us some insight for maybe someone trying to uh, learn how to jungle a little bit better, watching replays, trying to just get a feel for the numbers? Are you kind of on par right now, ahead of the game, or a little bit behind mm, where you should be? That's a pretty normal GPM right now, as uh, at this point in the game, you should be going to farm the hard camp, as I am now. Mm -hmm. And uh, with your medium camp blocks, or in this case, the pool, it's actually pretty difficult to do anything more than just farm the easy camp, the top uh, top rune spawn medium camp, and stacking the hard camp. Mm -hmm. So there's really not much else you can do unless you have all your camps to work with. 
I see. And yeah, I mean, of course, taking out that big cam, now you kind of jumped up to about the 285 GPM mark. So that, that's definitely, uh, I mean, you're leading your team, so can't be doing um, too bad. One of the next things I want to talk about is um, item choices here. Uh, obviously, with uh, any kind of tanky hero, but especially one like Legionnaire, Helm the Black Legion, as well as um, a portal key are, are very important. We're going to see actually a little gank attempt here, so I guess we'll hold that thought for a second. And uh, Plague Rider going to be a little bit of a sticky situation. If I remember correctly, you guys do pick up this kill, though. It takes um, <laughs> quite the effort and uh, quite the tower <laughs> dive as well. Uh, we go a little deep. Yeah, indeed, you do eventually get it. The Corrupted Disciple um, does pick up the kill there. So, pretty solid gank attempt, like you said. All about that lane control. The lane finally pushed up, so you had that opportunity um, mm -hmm. to move in. And the way of item choices, I, I guess it's fair to say Legionnaire, one of the heroes that uh, is a little bit more straightforward. You know, that the Black Legion Portal Key are kind of your your core pickups. Do you ever mm -hmm. alter from that? I mean, is it every game just straight to Helm the Black Legion, Red Boots, Portal Key, or is there uh, something else that you try to do instead? Um... There are some times where you don't complete the helm, like say you're ganking really well, or there's going to be lots of opportunities to gank, you can go like uh, phase boots before you even get your helm of black legion, just mm -hmm. for those, uh, for easier ganking, but in most cases, yeah, you're just going to stick to the cookie cutter, helm of black legion, boots, and then a blink dagger. I see. That, and that kind of makes sense. In the situations you mentioned, uh, when those phase boots are particularly important, um, I mean, can you give us some sort of a an indicator as to when those opportunities are specifically? Like, is there a specific hero set that it works well against, or uh, some specific situation and that's really a viable option? Well, uh, for instance, in talking in pub games especially, like, uh, I've played in so many games where the other team will send uh, two melee heroes to their long lane, which... It, when talking about Legion is top, when talking about Hellborn is bottom. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, you can just continuously gank them as Legionnaire due to, uh, like, just how good you are against melee heroes. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, you would just want to pick up items that would help you gank as much as possible versus farm the jungle. Nice. And then after phase boots, just transition into that same cookie cutter, uh, Portal Key, uh, Helm the Black Legion. Yeah. And are there any situations where going just a super, super fast portal key is the way to go? I mean, uh, like red boots into portal key or something like that, if you can farm it? Um, there are situations, although they're rare, and it's really just a matter of choice. Like, instead of picking up the phase boots when there's an easily ganked lane, you just save all your money and get a blink up here. I it's see. not something I normally do, but it is an option. Maybe one of those sort of similar, some parallels between that rushing mock strategy on the effort. If you're already dominating, just sort of, uh, you know, make it hurt a little bit more early on. But in a sort of real competitive game, not really so viable. Yeah. All right. Very, very cool. Um, so, I mean, anything else about Legionnaire that I've sort of glanced over or, um, I mean, that would be particularly helpful to someone who is, you know, maybe someone that wasn't even aware that you could stack camps or doesn't know how to stack camps? Uh, any kind of advice to uh, a Legionnaire on that level? Um, one or two things. Uh, one, don't max your spin because it's awful. Max charge farms quicker and is much better for ganks. Mm -hmm. Uh, two... If you're going to kill creeps without uh, specifically stacking them, make sure you don't kill them in the spawn unless it's uh, before the 37 second mark on the minute. Or it'll block the next spawn. Ah, okay. Now that's a very good metric to jot down, that 37 second mark. Um, those kind of numbers make it much easier, I think, for those of us to uh, remember. And as far as stacking, uh, what's the best time index, at least in your opinion? I believe it's a five second tether to get them out of the position before they run back. So uh, about 56, is that a keen time to try, attempt to stack? Yeah. That's, oh, actually, I normally just do it at 54. 54, okay. That's just uh, like the number I use. Mm -hmm. But you can do it essentially anywhere between 54 and like 57 if you want to get really close yeah <laughs> yeah that's uh, I, I guess 56 is kind of on um the, the later end i guess you could say um mm -hmm. but you know we're, we're kind of uh, getting that point in this replay we're going to cut it and move on uh, pretty soon here you know we're about that 10 minute mark and at this point it's pretty straightforward you know you have your home in the black legion and you can kill triple stacks pretty much no problem you know once you get yeah. all that mitigation things become much more straightforward um so just sort of from this point forward any uh, sort of words of advice or tips uh, I mean maybe after you get that portal key 
Um, what items after that? Is that just situational based on the game? Are there other uh, kind of core items past those two, uh, the Helm of the Black Legion and Portal Key, I mean, that are particularly good on Legionnaire? Uh, I would say core, like if you really want to win a game, then the core items to pick up would be Bulwark into uh, Barbed Armor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a Bulwark mixed with your charge, I think it negates 10 armor from them, and then you just pretty much tear them apart. But it's pretty situational if you're just trying to play for fun. Right, that's uh, definitely true. I mean, it kind of all depends. At, you know, at this point, the only re we're, the reason we're looking at just the early stages, because at this point, um, you know, your farm and stuff sort of depends on your team. Are all of your lanes dominating or getting dominated? You know, that makes mm -hmm. a big difference. As we see here in this game, TDM's doing very well as far as 8 to 6, a nice early lead. So you're pretty much left alone in the jungle. You can just free farm your way to victory um, at this yep. point. You know, no pressure, no wards blocking your spawns or anything like that. Um, I, I guess my one last question uh, about Legionnaire is when or ever do you decide to go down into uh, the enemy jungle and uh, get a little bit more aggressive? Um, is that totally viable on Legionnaire or very situational as well? Um, It is situational. It's like how I said earlier about uh, whether you go into the enemy or your own jungle, it's all about what lanes will be easily ganked. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, if I'm pubbing, though, I'll go into the enemy's jungle if I'm playing on Legion, because I hate the Legion jungle. <laughs> Alright. Uh, any particular reason why the Legion jungle is so much worse to Um... I, I don't know. It's just like, it feels awkward to farm it many times because there's no medium camp anywhere near the easy camp. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for heroes like Warbeast, for instance, who, if there's Catman spawns at both of the hard camps, has a really hard time farming them, mm -hmm. you have you just spend so much time running back and forth versus being on Hellborn where you just go like three feet away. I see. Another key distinction. I hate those damn Catman. They're the bane of my existence when I'm playing Keeper of the Forest in the jungle, man. Mm. Yeah. Just call the remake vote right away when I see that shit. <sighs> Alright, so, um, but I think that about does it for Legionnaire here. Again, if you, unless you have anything else to add, uh, I think we can move on to our next replay. Uh, no, that should be everything. Alright, very cool. So, um, <coughs> coming up next here, we are going to take a look at Parasite, uh, and then after that, we're going to take a look at Tempest as well. Obviously, there are quite a few jungler heroes, quite a few that you play very nice. I wanted to look at Keeper of the Forest, but these are the first three replays I took a look at, and I don't know if we'll have time to take a look at four or five here. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get uh, our next one loaded up. So it'll be just a second here, guys, while Z-Freak and I fumble around our uh, local replays. Uh, the Parasite game? Yes, Parasite game. I can give you the match ID real quick if you nope. need it. I got it. Good. Alrighty. <coughs> so I don't have a time index jotted down, so we'll start sometime after the picking phase here, probably around that 8 minute mark again, something like that yeah. on the replay time. Yeah, will most likely be right there. So I have to ask though, how come you are the jungler? I mean, not too infrequently on the stream do we say stuff like, oh, you know, no surprise here to see you know, Z-Freak in the jungle again. What is it about the jungle? Is that one of those things you were just sort of uh, roped into as you were on a team and no one else wanted to do it? Or did you, you know, graciously volunteer to be the guy that sits in the jungle because you'd prefer to uh, fight the neutrals instead of other players? Is there, um, you know, a, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that influence your decision to spend a lot of time in the jungle? Uh, I actually enjoy jungling for the most part. I like the heroes that jungle. For like, I love playing Parasite, especially in pubs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But um, it was pretty much something I've just done for a while now, ever since we were like uh, the old lineup with TDM. And uh, I don't know, it's just what I've been doing. I see. Makes makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, just you know, just curious if there was some other kind of uh, motivation behind it. Uh, I'm at the 8 minutes and 30 seconds uh, index on the replay timer, if uh, that works for you, sir. Uh, yeah, one moment, I will be there. And... pause. Okay, I'm there. Alright, so we can go ahead and get it started here. Pull up Parasite, there it is. I'm going to lock the camera and we'll go ahead and press play in 3, 2, 1, go. So, uh, here we are obviously in our second game, guys. Welcome <laughs> to learning about Parasite here. Of course, I'm Zayori. Oh, gosh, need to switch it over. There we go, <laughs> there we go. Now we can see in-game, looks great. Looks great. So the first thing I want to point out here before we get into anything else is obviously you're going to go to the bottom lane, hop in a creep to deny it. Um, 
want to note that that's no longer possible unless I'm totally mistaken and off my rocker. They've changed that with Parasite now, uh, and you can't deny creeps until level 2 to prevent this from happening, correct? Uh, you are correct. You cannot deny your own creeps until level 2 of Infest. Very disappointing. So the little um, deny strategy we'll see here is no longer viable. Um, just wanted to point that out. Uh, this replay is from before the most recent <laughs> patch. Um, I think definitely... Oh. Um, an important thing to uh, to point out. So the first thing I want to ask you about here, obviously you are going to be jungling in this game. You're not going to be doing the suicide lane parasite, doing that kind of a plague rider style, just denying creeps. Uh, so you will be in the jungle, obviously, uh, since we're learning about the jungle. And parasite is a very interesting hero, a pretty unique hero. And when he came out, you know, there's really no other hero like him that can take over creeps. Um, so I want to ask you about your starting items here, going for the mark of the novice as well as five mana potions. Um, is this your standard opening build here for Parasite? Um, when I ha when I buy a support item, yes. When I don't buy a support item, or you know, upgrade the courier or buy wards, mm -hmm. I normally start with the Ring of the Teacher and two mana potions, just because you can infinitely farm the jungle with those starting items. Ah, okay. All right, that's and that's perfect because my next question was going to be how come you didn't start with Ring of the Teacher? So that makes perfect sense um, as far as being one to. Uh, by, by support item, so uh, perfect sense indeed. Now, one thing in this game that uh, I think is important to note uh, that may influence some of the decision making we're going to talk about in a second here is there is a Wild Soul on the opposing team. We do see Wit playing Wild Soul, who is going to be in the Legion jungle. This is one of these situations where there's a jungler on each team. So, I, I guess talk to us why you opt to go down to the Legion jungle. Is it simply just to try and slow down Wild Soul as much as possible, just to mess with his head, um, or are we doing this anyway? I guess talk to us about the mechanics of Parasite versus Wild Soul in the game. Uh, well, Parasite does definitely beat a Wild Soul in the jungle, or at least he, uh, benefits a lot more from being in the same jungle than a Wild Soul does. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, there's also ganking opportunities bottom, mm -hmm. so it made the most sense to go into their jungle. I see. And, I mean, even if Wild Soul wasn't here, would you probably still decided to go down in this Legion jungle, or probably not? Oh no, I hate Legion jungle. <laughs> I see, I see. So we will see that first gank attempt as you were talking about level 2 here. The Skeleton King going to come in and uh, you guys indeed will be able to pick up a kill onto a uh, Plague Rider to start this off. So that's a nice little pick-me-up, picking up an assist early on. Um, and again, that segues very nicely into what I wanted to ask you about with Parasite. A, a hero very heavily based on early ganking. So how do you how do you gauge that frequency? Because sometimes we see parasites, um, you know, in the jungle, not really ganking a whole lot, just farming up, trying to hit that level six in a timely manner. And then we see situations like this, where um, you know, obviously level two, you're already in that lane trying to help set up a gank. Talk to us well, about that a little bit. Where does that decision making come from? It really goes back to the whole who's in your lane and who's in, or in that lane, who's on your team and who's on their team. For me here, there's an electrician and a glacius, which are like really easy ganks mm -hmm. on especially a hero like Plague Rider who has no escape mechanism mm -hmm. and uh, it's just profitable to be ganking a lot. I see, Except so. for here where there's a little bit of miscommunication and I end up feeding. But, yes. okay. Yes, when I saw this it looked pretty much uh, like a classic case of the good old miscommunication. Um, poor Parasite gonna kind of run straight into the tower there, but uh, your point's well taken, though. It's all about uh, the heroes, very situational, and I think the key takeaway as far as trying to find something that um, lower-level players can look at and understand is heroes without an escape mechanism are really who you want to target, because that yeah. leech ability, or, um, yes, leech uh, has that movement slow, uh, so, of course, um, you know, a hero that can't leap or <laughs> blink or do something else, very, very powerful. So a hero like Plague Rider is kind of like fresh meat for you on Parasite. Mm-hmm. Um, very good, very good indeed. So now the next thing here, obviously you get killed and you go back to the Hellborn jungle. Give us some of the, the insight on that. Obviously we talked about the benefits of Parasite being in jungle against Wild Soul, to slow down that Wild Soul. How come you opted to go back to the defensive jungle now? Is it strictly because you don't have boots and uh, you want to, um, you know, you don't want to run all the way back down there? Or is there a little more to it? Um, I went to our jungle because I knew in theirs there was no hard creep at either of the hard camp spawns, and the only spawn in medium camp was all wild hunters, which are pretty useless for a level 2 parasite. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't going to be much ganking I could do out of that jungle. I see. Ah, and that, that's an interesting um, little piece as well. So this, this parasite conversation is perfect. We're just 
flowing from one topic to the next. Um, and one of the problems with Parasite as well is it, it's very luck based as far as which creeps spawn and which creeps are useful. Like you said, level two, you can't do a hell of a lot with a wild hunter. Um, are there any creep spawn rotations, sort of like you mentioned with the Catman uh, and uh, War Beast, where it's just so, so difficult to deal with early on? Are there any situations like that with Parasite where you get a rotation of creeps that uh, is just infinitely frustrating to try and farm effectively? Uh, pretty much whenever both of your hard camps spawn uh, Skeleton Kings at level 1. Ah, alright. So that's... Uh... Yeah, I mean, for Parasite, I guess you, you kind of want the, the harder creeps because that ma makes them more powerful to kill the other creeps, whereas uh, with most other junglers, you kind of want the easy creeps to kill early on. Sort of an interesting yeah. um, mechanic how that works as well. As far as early game, um, I, I guess so it's pretty straightforward and obvious, but what are your go-to um, your go -to creeps to try and gank with? Obviously, the Minotaur and Skeleton King, I guess, are kind of top two. Uh, I actually would prefer a Catman over either of those. Really? At really early levels, because they do such a ridiculous amount of damage. Ah, uh, okay. So that makes sense as well. And uh, I guess, Sir, since you've hopped into a three Vulture Lords already this game, uh, what are your thoughts about these bad boys? Is the Tornado worth it? Um, one of the things you can do as Parasite is a is stack either the a medium camp or an easy camp, and then when you get a Vulture, you use the Tornado to farm it. Mm -hmm. So I don't really mind them when I'm just AFK farming, but... In this game, they were kind of annoying because I couldn't gank top. Ah, uh, okay, I see. And that, again, that kind of flows into what you were talking about, where, um, you know, it, unfortunately, it's sort of situational. You left that bottom lane because there weren't any creeps to set up a ganking opportunity. So, <laughs> Parasite's one of these heroes that you sort of need the stars to align a little bit as far as having the right here or the right creeps at the right time while having some lane control. We see this top lane right now was pushed up pretty far, so I can be able to gank Jirazaya too easily. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I mean, I guess any thoughts, any little tricks with Parasite is to try and how to get around that or how to maximize on, on farm if you don't have lane control and you don't get the best spawns to creeps? Uh, pretty much just keep going from one hard camp to the other. And if you get a, a Catman creep, as I just did twice in a row, you can farm uh, other camps with it. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, you essentially just farm the two hard camps. Okay, alright, makes, makes pretty good sense. Um... So one of the next things I want to talk about here is level 6 with Parasite. Obviously you want to gank as much as you can. Are there situations though where you kind of want to sit back and just farm more aggressively to hit level 6 as fast as possible? Um, or I, I guess any kind of strategies where doing super early ganking isn't um, you know, quite as favorable or something like that. I mean that, that ultimate is pretty huge on this hero. Um, so I don't know, any thoughts about that in general? Uh, normally you want to try and gank whenever you can, but there are situations where ganking is, uh, nigh impossible. Mm -hmm. For instance, if, uh, if, say, uh, I don't know, I can't really give any examples. If you look at the heroes you want to try and gank, and it's like a Valkyrie, then ganking him before level 6 is really difficult. Mm -hmm. And it, you're better off just farming. Uh, okay. I mean, so again, it comes back to that escape mechanism. Parasite being one of these heroes that really preys on heroes without that escape mechanism. But uh, you know, if they have a, a roster that's set up pretty well, um, you know, it might be a little bit better to sit back and farm. So mm -hmm. that, that makes a pretty good sense. All all of the dots are connecting here. So I like this uh, parasite conversation quite a bit. The next thing I want to ask you about is item choices. Now, parasite is one of these heroes, not quite like legionnaire, where we see a difference in item choices quite frequently. Here we see you went straight for the ring of sorcery. Um, so I guess first things first, is that a pretty standard build for you? Would say would you say that that's your norm as far as uh, early item pickups on parasite? Yeah, that's pretty much what I buy every parasite game, unless I'm uh, like farming really really poorly then I'll just settle to get a chalice but most times I just get a ring of sorcery mm -hmm. I see and uh, on top of that um, how do you end up deciding where you're gonna go after that because parasites one of these heroes we see codex on from time to time uh, but also just picking up a hell flower and a storm spirit isn't a bad way to go either how do you how do you go about that decision making process? Is that just uh, hero based, depending on who you need to shut down? Obviously, Hellflower counters a handful of heroes very effectively. Um, you know, I mean, are you a fan of Codex on Parasite? Again, is it just a situational thing? Give some insight about the later item choices. <coughs> it's really a it's more situational thing. For instance, it goes all it just goes back to the heroes the other team has. Like uh, in this game, they have a bubbles 
a Wild Soul, which is actually relatively squishy when he's not in his ultimate form, a Plague Rider, and a Magmus. Mm -hmm. And all of those heroes can get taken down by an early Codex, so right. it's a good choice here. But if you aren't really able to farm much and uh, getting an early a Codex in, say, I want to say like the first 17 minutes is impossible, then you're much better off just trying to save your money and get a more useful item later on. Okay, and I guess on top of that is, <coughs> what, what do you feel about updating or upgrading the codex? Is that ever a good idea, or is it better to sit on level one codex so you can get it early and then transition into, as you put it, something more useful? Uh, or are there situations where just going for, you know, uh, ghost marchers and a level five codex is the way to go? <laughs> That's actually what I do many times, but uh, it, it again all goes back to how successful you been with the level 1 codex, so how quickly you can farm levels, and how easily you'll be killing the other team with it. I, I see. Cause, you know, I mean, I, again, the geniuses on the forums sometimes uh, would have me believe that uh, Codex on Parasite is just the silliest thing ever. So stupid and so gimmicky, and um, you know, the only good redeeming quality is to get a couple of free kills, but all in all, it makes you just a one-hit wonder, a one-hit wonder, a one-trick pony, and then after you burn those cooldowns, you're just a useless little blob on the field. Um, I mean, what would you say to those guys? What would you say to the doctors there in the forums that are uh, you know, filling everybody with great advice? Um, well, it, it's more just for fun to go Codex. It, I mean, it, <laughs> it, I don't know how to really answer that because it is effective if you do it properly. It is gimmicky at all times, but it can work. Mm-hmm. But it, the, I guess the point is, it can be effective in some situations. Yeah. Um, because, of course, one thing that a lot of people don't realize about Codex is leveling it up doesn't just give you more burst damage, but it also reduces the cooldown, reduces the mana cost, and makes it a little bit more effective item. Um, so that is a good thing to note as well. As we see here, a nice little team fight, and that actually shows us uh, how the getaway of Parasite can be quite strong, hopping into a creep for a little bit of additional survivability. So you turn it around. It's pretty, pretty big Parasite plays right there, Z-Freak. What about 14... Hit points, and you know, the power of Parasite, I suppose, being displayed. Don't use take cover until the Parasite throws his leech, man. It won't work out for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, <coughs> it seems you got a TD in this particular game, TDM having a pretty easy time. Wild Soul seemed a little bit confused um, <laughs> during that kill you got earlier, sort of seeing a random Wild Hunter. Oh, that's not suspicious. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, you see Parasite... Well, uh, he was more likely than not stacking Ancients with his bear at the time, because uh -huh. you could see that he wasn't really dealing with his hero. Mm -hmm. And then I was invisible for most of it. He probably caught a glimpse of me right before I went invisible, but for the most part, it was just him not looking at his hero. That's that, that's a good little piece of insight, z Free, because I would have just blamed it on not paying attention. But uh, <laughs> stacking with the Ancients, that sounds much better, and that's probably what was what truly the case. Um, but still, sort of, the power of Parasite demonstrated. Um, and now as we're sort of moving into that point again where the subjectiveness of the game is influencing your decision making and the item choices and that kind of stuff with your Parasite here. Uh, any, any last advice, sort of the same question again that we have with Legionnaire for the aspiring Parasite, for the person going to try Parasite for the first time after watching this breakdown, uh, what advice would you give them as far as, um, you know, being successful? Um, I tell them to just keep practicing with it and figure figure out for themselves when they feel comfortable ganking lane and when they should just farm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I guess one of the last things we can talk about here is uh, skill builds. Uh, obviously you went uh, level 4 leech, level 4 infest, ultimate at level 6. Do you always wait this long to get the draining venom, the passive that makes you do extra damage? Um, yes. Always wait till level 10 for that? Yeah. I see a lot of people who say uh, you should only get level 1 infest, but personally I like to max it mm -hmm. because your creeps run ridiculously fast when you level it, and it also makes for easier farming. Yeah, and uh, also, you know, it helps for that getaway. You know, if you hop into a creep, it heals you up um, a little bit a little bit more, I do believe, unless I'm totally mistaken. No, it does. Yes. Oh, yeah. There, and, uh, and when you have an early ring of sorcery, it, no matter what health the enemy team puts you at, for instance... Right now, I didn't go heal after going to 8 health top. Mm -hmm. so this is me running around at full health, nearly full mana, never had to go back to fountain, purely because infest got leveled. 
Yeah, exactly. So you can see the power of it right there. And we can still even see here, even the effect that you had early on in the jungle, we see there's still no strong creep here. Just these little uh, undead warriors and still uh, the wild hunters are stacked up here. So uh, mm -hmm. your presence in the jungle early on really slowed down Wild Soul. You can just take a glance at the GPMs here. Wild Soul, um, you know, other things going on in this game as well, but, um, you know, definitely struggling quite a bit compared to you as Parasite. So um, some situations, again, going into that uh, opposing team's jungle is... Pretty damn effective. But, uh, I think that about does it for Parasite here, Z Freak, unless there is uh, something else you want to add yet again. I'll give you the last word here for Parasite. Uh, wild Hunters are OP. Wild Hunters are OP as long as you're not level 2. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely. Um, I mean, running around at max move speed invisible with magic immunity, it's pretty fun. <laughs> That's a good way to play. I never, I never really connected the dots that closely as far as, okay, you're magic immune, you're super fast, and you're invisible. Wow. Wild yeah. Hunters actually are pretty goddamn good. Yep. Wow. All right. Well, I think that's a perfect note to end on about why Parasite is so good. I know a lot of people talk about your Parasite. I mean, you know, like, like I said before, you're talked about as a, a really keen jungler a lot, but Parasite is one of those heroes, and I was sort of um, drafting the notes for this and consulting a few people, and I was like, oh, you got to do Parasite. Z-Freak on Parasite equals sex. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> wow. Z-Freak, you have quite the profound effect on, uh, on Han players if uh, you know, they're equating your Parasite play to sexual intercourse. That's, that's the next level, man. Yeah, I try. <laughs> it's good stuff. Good stuff here. So we're going to move into our third and final replay here, guys. It is indeed Tempest. So uh, a little bit more straightforward, I think. Tempest, um, at least in my opinion, I think a little bit easier to manage in the jungle. But um, we'll, we'll talk about it. I mean, what do you think? I guess actually a good intermediate question here is who's your favorite to play in the jungle? Who do you think is most fun if you could pick uh, you know, all things equal to play for the rest of your life in the jungle? Which one would it be? Jeez, the rest of my life? Well, you know. Just to, just am I taking on the persona though. of this character as well, or am I still myself playing a video game? Uh, I'd say you're still playing the video game, for sure. Mm. I mean, Tempest is really fun. Ah, interesting. So I, I would have thought Parasite was the easy answer there, for sure. Well, I find farming the jungle fun. I'm weird like that. But uh, right. Tempest just does it so well. Yeah. And then five man ulting is pretty fun as well. I see. Can't do that as Parasite. Like one guy over and over and over and over. That's true. You can make big plays on Parasite, but not to the same magnitude as you can on that Tempest. When you just can't, there's no feeling to replace just that huge like, uh, you know, catching all their whole team. That perfect genocide. I mean, it, it's a rush, man. It's like it's better than sex. It's <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. If you haven't experienced that and you play Heroes of New Earth, you are doing yourself an injustice, I think it's fair to say. Um, so I'm at the 10.15 in-game timer for this one. Picking phase took a little bit longer. So 10.15. Uh, Let me know when you're ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to go. All right. Let's see. Where's Tempest? And we can switch over our overlays here. So let's go ahead and press play in 3, 2, 1, go. And there we are. So let me pull up my notes here again, and uh, should be in good shape. So one thing I want to note, same as we noted about Parasite in that last replay, um, I believe now with Tempest you still can deny creeps at level 1, correct? Yes, you can. Ah, very good. So this little strategy uh, still works very, very nicely, uh, helping out the, the long lane a little bit, getting some of that lane control. So again, I, I guess uh, same story, different hero here with the starting items, exact same 5 mana potions, Mark of the Novice. <laughs> Is that just because you had to pick up one of those uh, support items again? Yep. And had you not picked up a support item, your starting build would be two mana potions, Ring of the Teacher? Uh, not normally on Tempest, because I get really annoyed when a, a creep will randomly attack my hero and get rid of my mana potions. Mm -hmm. I've actually been experimenting a lot lately with uh, starting item builds, and I just like to get as many mana potions as possible. Oh, interesting. So just straight mana potions? Well, no, not 600 gold of mana potions. Oh, but... <laughs> okay. Well, that was, that was but... what I was picturing by that description. No, nor normally I think my favorite build now, uh, if I'm definitely not going to get harassed in the jungle and there's no need to buy trees, mm -hmm. I'll go uh, Mark of the Novice and a uh, Circlet to help me get a quicker okay. ring of sorcery and just buy mana potions. Okay, all right. Makes a little more sense. Makes a little more sense now. Totally... 
totally with it. So, um, very nice, very nice. So, I guess I, before we get too far into it here, um, tell us a little bit why. So, why exactly is Tempest your favorite? Is it just because you have that late game potential as well? One of the things with Parasite we didn't mention that um, I actually had in my notes and kind of skewed <laughs> over is his scalability in into the late game. Um, I mean, I, I guess with the three heroes we're seeing here, Tempest, Parasite, and Legionnaire, how would you rank them in their ability to uh, to scale effectively? Tempest definitely scales the best in the late game. I'd have to say Legionnaire is second, but I don't know. It, it really just depends on how well the game went for you, because yeah. Legionnaire can carry at the end of the game. Parasite really can't, no matter how many items he has. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Yeah, Tempest is definitely the best late game, though, just for the ultimate. I see. So, to start it off here, just give us a little bit of insight about kind of your initial strategy with Tempest. I mean, I, I said earlier on a little bit more straightforward, because at least in my mind it is, you pretty much just uh, turn one of the creeps into an elemental and then auto-attack your way to victory, microing your elementals uh, when appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. Am I missing a key part of Tempest farming here? Uh, no, not really. That's essentially what you do. So, um... Yeah, I mean, any other sort of initial insight to starting off the jungle with Tempest? Uh, I mean, we talked about starting items a little bit, but maybe uh, potent other potential starting item choices or, uh, you know, creep spawns that are particularly difficult. Any uh, nice rotation uh, when you decide to stack? We see there's a stack here already. Uh, very, very kind of your teammates to help you out with that. Um, I think it was actually the enemy, but oh. I guess it was. Oh my, oh my, that's a keen eye, good sir. But um, yeah, so I mean, any thoughts about when to stack with Tempest? Obviously, we mentioned before, not like quite like Legionnaire, where stacking is super effective, uh, but it does help a little bit. Uh, how do you make that distinction, or do you just let your teammates or enemies do it um, if it's if it's convenient? Um, many times you want to stack medium and easy camps, but you would never want to stack a hard camp. Because if you get like two catmen or two vagabond leaders or one of each, they're just going to eat your low level elementals alive. Mm -hmm. So it's really something you want to try and avoid, at least for the uh, beginning of the game. Okay, so uh, I guess that makes it a little bit easier for those of us aspiring uh, Tempest junglers out there. Don't have to worry about stacking, deciding when to sk uh, stack. It's um, pretty pretty damn straightforward. Um, you know, mm -hmm. not not as much to analyze, I guess. Um, so similar to, you know, at this point, you know, we're sort of recycling some of these questions, but insert uh, the, the other hero name. Um, <laughs> but what lineups work best for Tempest? I mean, obviously, Tempest is a pretty easy Any hero lineup. to analyze. Yeah, anything with AoE. Uh, but is there a particular lineup or hero that you guys like to match Tempest with or use Tempest against? Uh, you know, not really to my knowledge. The hero is just, I'll, I'll say it, imbalanced. Really? Like, but you would you would coin Tempest imbalanced? I would actually. Wow. Because if you see like here, I even wasted mana trying to gank, but I'm still the highest level in the game. And if I keep farming, it'll stay that way. I say he's imbalanced because he can out farm lane heroes, out level them, and uh, he really only needs a blink dagger to win the entire game. Yeah, I, I mean, I. I... I can agree. I can see exactly where the argument comes from. I mean, looking at that XP per minute tab, it's pretty astounding. You know, you're a hundred experience per minute ahead of anyone else in the game, and that's Dark Lady, who's just farming away. If we take a look at the GPM tab, um, you're, you're not leading. I mean, you're leading your team. You're still at 277. I mean, that's pretty damn good for four minutes in. Uh, and of course, we talked about opening up those other lanes for your uh, your team to pick up a little more experience. And, and uh, Valkyrie got first blood, though. Yeah, so you gotta remember that. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that, that's actually a really good thing to point out. That uh, I was, I'm, I'm tunnel visioning so hard on Tempest right now that uh, I actually totally ignored that. So that's a really good thing to point out. Um, so, what would you propose as kind of a potential fix or something that would level Tempest out uh, with the rest of the heroes in the pool? Jeez, um. I don't really know how to balance this hero. <laughs> like as so long good. as as long as his ultimate exists, he's going to be that hero that can win an entire game with one button. Oh, interesting. So, uh, wow, that's really interesting. It's not too often you hear people that play a particular hero very frequently that actually admit that they're broken. Usually, it's the opposite. For some reason, this hero is underbalanced. And they need more help because they play this hero so often. So, that's very big of you, Z Free. That's really. Uh... Really, really kind of nice to hear for a change. Uh, I, I do want to note here, you did pick up your Ring of Sorcery first. Again, is this uh, kind of the norm? Is this your go-to pretty much every game, yep. just grabbing Ring of Sorcery straight away? Pretty much. I love that item. 
Um, any any ulterior choices that you ever ever pick up? Um, you know, any situation where ring of sorcery first is not appropriate? Uh, pretty much never. <laughs> All right, so Tempest is becoming even more straightforward than I initially thought. You don't have to stack creeps, you don't really have to pull, and uh, you just go Ring of Sorcery every game. Just make your elementals. Pretty easy. Easy peasy. Pretty much. Ring of Sorcery into Ring of the Teacher, push towers, win game. Oh, yeah, that's the other reason he's overpowered. He is, I want to say, the most pushing potential in the game. Really, beyond that of Keeper of the Forest. Yes. Keeper can have his minions killed. Uh, Tempest, I want to say, push faster and have more health to magic damage, mm -hmm. just due to their magic armor. Mm -hmm. So, it's an interesting interesting point, actually. Um, but, I mean, obviously Tempest does push very effectively, but thinking of Tempest as the best pusher in the game is not quite uh, quite the title that I had coined uh, good old Tempe here, but um, it's going to be an interesting take on the hero. Um, I, I do want to note also that you're going uh, level 2 Glacial Blast, level 3 Elemental. Is that the standard as well? I mean, do you ever go level 3 Glacial Blast? No, I normally just stick to level 2 Glacial Blast. I'm, there are very rare situations where I'll think that third mini stun is appropriate, but leveling your Elementals makes you farm faster, push faster, and uh, say you get ganked in the jungle, they do ridiculous amounts of damage to anyone trying to kill you. Yeah, I mean, this little push here definitely speaks to the pushing power of level 3 elementals. You guys are about to take out a second tier tower already. You just now hit level 6, so that scary ultimate is at hand. I'm, I can't quite recall how the team fight goes. Actually, I think this little team fight goes very poorly for you. You know, Tail comes yeah. in. And, uh, yeah, he makes cool. it rain all over the Tempest here. I was busy microing my elementals to kill the tower, okay? <laughs> Perfect. Well, they did indeed uh, pick up that tower kill, so that is that is true. One of the, the nice things about Tempest. Um <laughs> Definitely, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, with Keeper of the F that, that does speak to your point, though. A better pusher than Keeper of the Forest, because once Keeper of the Forest dies, his little creep, uh, tree babies can't attack the tower because he's not in range. Um, yeah. So that that's um, I guess a, a very small but specific distinction that does give credit to Tempest as far as having that pushing power. Um, so now, obviously, obviously, uh, like you said, Ring of the Teacher next for that pushing power. Red boots. Uh, in pub games, it seems a lot of Tempest because, you know, in pub games, it's somewhat rare to see people put a lot of pressure on the jungle, somewhat rare in the 1500 bracket to see your spawns blocked. Um, is there an opportunity where just rushing a portal key is the way to go? Uh, I mean, like with those starting items, just buying mana potions and literally straight up portal key? Uh, honestly, I think it's pretty silly in most cases to do that. When uh, a Tempest with the items I have right now just crushes towers. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, unfortunately, going to get hit by that arrow, but whoa, look at that Tempest ultimate. Again, speaking some truth to the stuff you were talking about, Z-Freak, that ultimate totally turned it around. I thought you were dead meat. A 3.5 second stun followed up by Magnus. Getting pretty dangerously low there, but um, pretty well done. I saw the potion was on you as well while the ultimate yeah. was off. Pretty clutch. <laughs> sender, sender health potion. Yeah, me. pretty clutch play right there. That was pretty big. So speaking of that truth even more, maybe... I don't know, Z Freak. I think you may have changed my outlook on Tempest a little bit. Now when I see games, I'm be like, "Damn, Tempest pickers, um, pretty wild, pretty pretty wild stuff." I mean, Tempest is definitely one of these heroes we used to see in almost every game, either banned or picked. And now there, there's a, a fair frequency of games where we see Tempest kind of ignored. You know, not picked up, not banned, just sort of, um, you know, it's still picked or banned just about every game. Still, I, I, a little bit less than it used to. It's, I mean, still a lot, um, but. You know, it's definitely, I, I don't think it's 100%, not 100%, at least in some of the games that we've been seeing, and um, the, the, it's Gosu Opens, but uh, I, suppose, I suppose you're right here. Unfortunately, it looks like Dark Lady is going to get the better of uh, Tempest uh, in this little exchange. Yeah, don't try and help teammates when Dark Ladies have haste. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, uh, you know, again, we're starting to get to the point in this game, like the others, um, where external factors are in influencing what you're doing and we're sort of not talking about the jungle as much as just the tempest in general and, and your team uh, and that kind of a thing. Uh, so some of the last points I have here um, for Tempest is one since we were just talking about items do you ever go for bottle on Tempest because that's something I've seen from time to time uh, instead of ring, the source, ring of sorcery first uh, actually going for a bottle. Any viability in that build? Um, I mean there is viability it helps throughout the game to have a bottle and uh, especially when you're focusing a lot more on wind control. Mm -hmm. But um, I always 
whenever I buy a bottle, get no rune spawns near me, so <laughs> it's kind of useless. I'm just unlucky in that sense, so I tend to avoid it. So yeah, it definitely does add, um, you know, that luck draw to it, whereas Ring of Sorcery is pretty much a sure thing. You know, every 30 seconds you're going to get your mana, uh, no questions asked. So I, I can see the stability there, getting rid of chance, definitely makes some sense. Uh, and really kind of the last point I have here, which I think I already kind of know the answer to, um, you know, how do you decide the frequency of how much to farm, how much to gank, and how much to push? And I think, you know, the answer to that really just comes down to it depends. It depends on what heroes they have. It depends on the lane control. Uh, I mean, is that pretty much the case? Is there any sort of secret or tip to, um, you know, how often you should try to gank before level 6 or um, try to push or anything like that for, again, those of us that uh, aren't the experienced hand at playing Tempest? Uh, to be honest with you, I normally would much rather farm than attempt and really early gank, as, well, as I said, Tempest farms stupidly quickly. Mm -hmm. But, uh, there are those rare occasions where the no escape hero is solo top, and yeah. you have, like, an electrician there. <laughs> so it just makes for super easy ganking. It's, it's one of those rare situations where uh, killing the hero is actually more cost effective than that solo farm, but... Mm -hmm. Like you said, very, very uh, rare occurrence, I guess. Oh, and uh, to put it in perspective for you, how much faster Tempest pushes than Keeper of the Forest, he has one more minion, and they hit for double the damage. Wow. That... Yeah. Right. Well, when they split anyway. Right. There's six minions versus five, and they do about double damage, so... Makes... Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, you know, Tempest Elemental is definitely one of those things where we've seen in fights where people definitely underestimate the damage. It's like Tempest versus someone who has six, uh, Tempest with six Elementals. They're like, oh, I can take Tempest, and all of a sudden their health just disappears after six Elementals beating on them. Oh, yeah. Um, they definitely do sort of a hidden amount of damage, I want to say. Some, sort of like Armadon. People just uh, don't expect the spines to add up that quickly. All of a sudden, um, you know, you're out of health, and it's it's just this... Uh, sort of reoccurring theme that uh, I've observed throughout my days of casting. Yeah, um, don't get me started on Armadon. I don't like that hero. <laughs> uh, I see. Well, certainly frustrating. He's been getting banned <laughs> more frequently these days, so I, I guess that uh, is good news in, in your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so, any last words for Tempest here? Anything, again, for um, you know someone trying Tempest for maybe the first time or the first couple times? Any quick words of advice for um, you know how to jungle with Tempest successfully? Um, really simplistic words of advice would be that uh, minions don't use their abilities, like uh, jungle creeps don't use their abilities unless there's three or more units next to them. Mm -hmm. So especially when you're farming like a cat man, you want to try and keep your elemental split so they don't just get stomped on, essentially. Right. Uh, um, I mean, that goes for any here. I mean, Keeper of the Forest as well. If you micro your trees so that there's only two of them, doesn't proc all their abilities, so that's actually a point that we didn't quite cover that uh, uh, I guess sort of both of us may, may have assumed that people were aware of, but uh, that is a good thing to point out as well. And uh, aside from that, always remember to micro your elementals, because like you had said, they do some pretty ridiculous damage, mm -hmm. especially when uh, you're trying to fight somebody in a lane. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, um, that about wraps it up for things that I have. Of course, those are the three replays. Uh, we did take a look at Tempest, Parasite, and Legionnaire. Uh, for those of you that, that may have tuned in late, of course, the VOD will be cataloged right after this. You can check it out on Zayori.tv. Um, uh, any sort of more generic words of advice, Z Freak? anything uh, that I skipped over, anything you want to add to uh, sort of this uh, Jungling 101 uh, little broadcast we did here? Uh... Lightning is awesome? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and again, guys, uh, the replays, if you want to download those and take a look, they're all pretty long, interesting games. Uh, oh, pardon me. The match IDs uh, will be posted uh, in the description of the VOD, so you can check those out um, as well. Uh, definitely appreciate it. So, Zephyr, get any shout-outs for us? Uh, closing comments? Uh, any comments you want to make? Maybe um, where people can find you? Do you stream anything, or do you have um, you know any kind of social media people can follow, website, anything like that? Uh, I stream from time to time on uh, Justin T or Twitch TV slash Zfreak. I think I have a Facebook page. Yeah, I do have a Facebook <laughs> page, and uh, you can follow me on those. But aside from that, uh, typical shout outs to the sponsors: uh, PerformancePC.net and uh, Nation Voice. God, I can't remember what it is. 
<laughs> a nation voice. I don't remember the ending part, but just nation voice. And nation voice. A nation voice. And uh, shout out to the family. Shout out to the family. Oh, that is that is so noble. That is that's exactly what I would I expect from a from a jungler. A junglers. So yeah. uh, again, Us guys. Noble junglers. <laughs> So anyway, sort of jungling 101, perhaps we'll have Z Freak back in the future to uh, go a little bit more in depth. Of course, there are other jungling heroes that are equally interesting. We didn't get to cover Ophelia or Keeper of the Forest. So maybe we'll do a, a, a jungling 102 in the weeks to come to cover some of the heroes that we missed. Uh, but Z Freak, has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for actually being the first guest to come on to uh, the breakdown. I do sincerely appreciate it. Hopefully it wasn't uh, too painful for you. Um, no. But I do you appreciate are. all the insight. It's nice to have uh, an actual pro on here giving us tips instead of just me blathering on about things I think you might be doing. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Very good. So that's going to wrap it up, guys. That will do it for episode number nine. We're actually pretty close to an hour today. That's pretty damn good. Usually we go at least an hour and a half, so uh, that timing actually worked out just about uh, perfectly. Of course, follow me on Twitter at ZyoriTV, Facebook.com slash ZyoriTV, and uh, this VOD will be cataloged uh, where all the other VODs are at ZyoriTV slash VODs. All that stuff will be there for you guys uh, to check out. But uh, until then, it has been a pleasure. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other, and uh, we'll see you guys on another breakdown.